Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. So folks, I want to focus on something uh, a little bit more like I was talking about in yesterday's video, which has to do with the sub buffer over here. And before that, I want to tell you about our amazing sequence club. If you haven't signed up at the PPD sequence club just yet, you get one free sequence each month. Also, you get free preset effect downloads as well as access to the vendors specials page, which we have worked with a number of the vendors across the hobby to save you tons of money on your holiday builds for the coming season. So save more with PPD. Now let's get back to the buffer tab and the buffer itself. So, uh, where does it, what what's the point of uh, of having this square buffer here? What what does this do for us? Now, if you watched my last video, um, you're you're going to find that uh, we did a little bit of work uh, within a mega tree, and I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and uh, show you. You can grab the buffer here, and you can kind of move it wherever you want. Um, you can right click on the buffer, and you can create halves and thirds and quarters. And you can make it oversized. Oversized basically means make it bigger than what it already is. So if you hit oversize, it makes it much larger. See, you don't see those little yellow lines anywhere anymore. You've just oversized the buffer so that the effect takes on a bigger presence. Um, and I can, I guess I can show you that. Let's go with the butterfly effect on the mega tree. There's the butterfly effect on the mega tree. But if I lay the butterfly effect down here and return to the normal stage, so you can see the difference between these two. Um, here, we'll put the on effect and you can, see, or the off effect, there we go. And you can see the difference between them. So here, the first one and the second one, the first one and the second one. The difference is, is that you've zoomed in the buffer so big. It's like using the roto zoom. It's like zooming in on the effect, but it makes the buffer a much larger size so that it can, so that you can get a little bit different look to whatever it is that you're going for. So um, a couple more of the right-click functions that we have here. We can edit the buffer, and we also can uh, apply to selected effects. This here is the bulk edit menu right here, apply to selected effects. So if you want to apply the same buffer setting, buffer square setting to a bunch of effects, by all means, you can right-click, you can select all your effects, and you can apply them. So like this one doesn't have the same as this one so if we click and drag we can right click and apply it and now they both have the same see how they're the same now okay so that's like your bulk edit if you want to do a bulk edit on on the buffer tab now um as far as segmenting segmenting is wonderful i i, I find it i'm just going to go with top half and we'll move this one down here and move this over and we'll call this the bottom half halves bottom half now a lot of people say well what, what what's the what's the reason that you would want to split the buffer in half well I like to do a significant number of effects where multiple parts of the buffer is set up uh, with different lines and so forth, vertical and horizontal. And I just like to sequence that way. I love to find uh, different ways to extrapolate effects and so forth. So that's an idea for you in your sequencing, but this gives you the power. This shows you the power of the layer setting box and the ability to manipulate. Now, the other thing I want to show you about the buffer is we have some uh, uh, we have some freedom of movement. Now you can literally you notice the crosshairs that we get when we come to the end of the buffer, or notice if we come to the corner of the buffer, we get these different kind of arrows that point opposite directions. So the difference between those is this will grab the entire buffer. I can pick it up and move it. And if you look at the preview here you can see what kind of effect we're having on the entire model. You see how we're moving it off of the buffer? We're moving it left to right here. And how we're moving it here, that's um, that's the freehand form. Now, there's a couple constraints that have been added into x lights to allow us to be a little bit more specific about how we're moving our different effects. And uh, if we hold the control key down, if we hold the control key down, I'm going to hold the control key, and now I'm going to move it. It's only going to let me move left and right, okay? Now, if I want to move up and down, I hold the control and shift key. Now I can move up and down, but I can't move left and right. You see that difference there? So 
in the most recent release of X Lights, I think we're on dot fourteen right now. Just released this morning. Um, thank you, Keith. Uh, if we come up to the corner here, another addition has been made. If you hold the control key down and you have your corner bracket selected there, you you can go left and right and make it only traverse on the um, on the x axis. And if you if you let go. If you let go, you can come and uh, you come. You just let go, and then you add the shift key and the control key again. Then you can only traverse up on the x-axis. So this is, or the y-axis. This is so. So control and shift are your helpful friends here. If you hold control and shift, you can go up and down the whole way in the center or at the corners. You can you can go up and down so and so forth. But you're not moving the whole thing unless you've got it in the center. If you're at the corner, you can do it at the corner. So this is kind of helpful if you're trying to make a significant number of effects. Let me lay down another one, uh, another butterfly. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Let's do let's do a pinwheel. Doesn't matter. And we want this pinwheel over here, uh, up here. You can see how we can grab that, and then we can do another one of these. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's do I don't know the shapes. I didn't do the shapes. Oh, I don't have it selected. There's the fire. Of, uh, the that's the candle effect. Uh, let's do that. Oh, that's the text effect. Let's put that down there. Okay, so now we can go down here to the bottom and we can put the text effect in here and put something on here, like hello or hi. There we go. So the, the the idea that you can quickly add in uh, text. This is a wonderful uh, a wonderful thing. You can move that text with uh, up and down nice and easily, and place it exactly where you need it uh, in your sequencing. If you're going for something specific. Um, and it's just a nice helpful function, a nice helpful feature. But I think one of the things that I love the most about this is the fact that holding the control key down allows us to go left and right. Holding the shift control down allows us to go top to bottom. And doing the same with the buffer tab. See, if you don't have anything held, you can go in any direction you want. If you don't have anything held down, you can go in any direction you want. But it is nice if you're trying to maintain a perfect uh, aspect ratio with your buffer that you can slide up and down and up and down. So folks, that's going to wrap it up for this tips and tricks. There's a whole lot more on this. You just need to begin playing with some of these functionalities that are here in x -Lights, waiting for you to discover them. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. Down through the chimney with those and, and every time it rains, it rains. And